Hello all, I am here doing a video today with an old model of mine that you may remember. Her name is Kelly and she, it was I think in 2018, we started her treatments. It is now four years later. Her skin, she has been maintaining it to be really fabulous. I'll put a before and after picture in here from after the treatments we did. We have her back today to do a peel and what peels do as we know is they really shrink those pores keep those pores small and just keep the skin tone nice and even so we're going to start with that treatment and um, and you'll see her skin how great it is I see her probably twice a year we do a cleaning and today we're doing a peel so we're gonna get started okay here's Kelly remember Kelly look how great she looks look at her skin we're going to do a peel as I said it's been four years uh, 218 we started with her skin she was somebody who was suffering with food congested acne a little bit of hormonal acne she sort of really had this breakout here on the cheek area but um, but today it's been four years we did a cleaning a couple of weeks ago just a light extraction uh, takes less than five minutes and now we're going to do the peel so we're going to cleanse off her skin my cleanser What is a peel good for? A chemical peel. Now this peel that we're doing today is a peel that has a little resorcinol in it. It has a papaya enzyme papwin and it has lactic acid in it. And resorcinol is the ingredient that makes it the chemical peel in the way that it, uh, how it exfoliates and how it stays on the skin. So the resorcinol makes it a peel where it makes the skin physically peel. That you see after several days it's been on the skin, that the skin is actually going to physically peel. And that's what the resorcinol does. Uh, the lactic acid and the papaya enzyme, they are both absorbing types of pe peels and exfoliants. And you don't see the exfoliation with those two alone. You only see it because of the resorcinol. And that is, uh, it, it, once you put it on the skin, you cannot wash it off. The peel, once, once it saturates the skin, you cannot wash the peel off. So it is something, it's a whole different process. Um, once it's applied, we know that after, you know, the skin gets a little tight, day number two, day number three, it starts to get wrinkly and dry, like a, like a sunburn gets wrinkly before you peel. Um, this is the same thing. The skin, it gets dry, it gets wrinkly, it starts to peel in day number three, day number four, and you usually start to peel around the areas of the mouth and the nose area first. The cheeks are always the last area to peel. So whenever you do a chemical peel on the face, it doesn't all peel at the same time. And sometimes the, the peeling that happens around the nose and the mouth area, it is their larger sheets that come off. So the cheeks, it's often just, it crumbles more. It's a different type of peel, but the mouth around the nose in particular and the forehead, that T-zone, is an area where it really sort of does come off in sheets and you want to make sure that you're never peeling it and helping it to peel because you can make the skin a little pink there and it can scar a little bit so you want to be very mindful of how um, you know when you do a peel just sort of how to take care of it at home and I always say you know when we do the peel I like to ask them to not wash their face for 48 hours so after today's application, we are um, Kelly's not going to wash her face for 48 hours and then she can just use the cleanser and a little bit of an aloe gel on the skin for the next week until her skin has pretty well peeled off um, that layer. So we want to keep the skin dry so that it peels quickly and she gets through that process. Um, so that's kind of what's going to happen for the next week. Uh, I do also recommend that people are not working out and sweating until the skin actually starts to shed. And that's very important. So you wanna make sure that you're not sweating underneath the peel because what will happen 
is um, you can get little pimples underneath because the skin, once the peel is on the face, the skin is not breathing at all. It can't, your oil can't go anywhere because this you've got this sheet of peel that's on the face that doesn't allow the skin to breathe at all. Uh, so therefore you don't want to be sweating and getting little pustules and things underneath because it can't expel and get out. Uh, not until the skin actually starts to peel, physically peel. So this one here I'm doing is the exfoliating mask and um, we're going to do a little exfoliation on the skin here now. This exfoliating mask has a little bit of the papaya enzyme, it also has a little bit of the glycolic acid in it and it is an absorbing exfoliant so it absorbs dead cells and stops um, you know the build up within a pore. Now what we do know about blackheads is that a blackhead is made up of bacteria, dead cells and sebum and the cleaner you keep your skin either with exfoliation and cleansing, that nightly cleanse in particular is so important to wash your face really well at night and doing circular motions always getting under any fine facial hair. You want to make sure that you're really spending time cleansing your skin because cleansing is so important, especially if you're an oily skin. And Kelly is an oily skin. She has blackheads all over the face, which makes her an oily skin because wherever you have blackheads, that's oil. So you want to make sure that you're cleansing very, very well. And as you can see, I'm just working in this exfoliant and this is just going to help to keep those pores clean because a clean pore will keep your pore size small and you want to keep your pores small in size. As we get older, collagen and elastin, things are not working as quickly, cells are not replacing themselves quickly, you want to just make sure that you're really doing things to help keep your skin clean, to keep your skin pretty. And the other area you want to be really mindful of is up here in the eyebrows. You want to make sure that you're really, uh, you're cleaning up here in the eyebrow because bacteria and oil, it gets caught under those eyebrows, under that hair. So you want to sort of be really mindful of it here as well. Now when removing the exfoliating mask you want to make sure that your water is not too hot because it has a bit of an, the glycolic acid in it. You want to make sure that you're using cooling things because you don't want it to sting and irritate the skin anymore. And remember we are doing a peel here so we don't want to cause any irritation on the skin. I'm going to use just some lightly warm towels just to make sure that we've got all the little excess bits off of the peel on the face, the uh, exfoliating mask, which is what we call a surface regenerative peel, one that has a buffing effect on the epidermis. We're getting ready now to apply the lactic peel, which is the peeling formula that has lactic acid, resorcinol, and um, it actually has a little bit of salicylic in it and the papaya enzyme as well it has the salicylic acid. So it's particularly good for oily skins because we know our salicylic acid is a BHA and an AHA and it helps work on the overabundance of oil. So we just want to make sure we've got all that exfoliator off. See, so we can see it there on the towel. And now we're going to get ready to apply the peel. Okay, I'm just going to readjust the hair. All right, pull it all the way back here so we can get up here close to the line. Dry off the skin. Just dry it off a little bit here before we start. 
Okay, we're good to go. Now I'm going to put the pre-peel solution on. This one right here. Again, this uh, this stops the peel from being a strong chemical peel. And although you know we want to peel her skin, we want to get a good peel. Sometimes in areas close around the eye area, I do not want to go too too strong here, and I just want to make sure that uh, it's an area that we're being very careful of. So we are just applying it a little bit here, just lightly on the skin, and it stops it from being super duper strong because we don't want to do super duper strong. We just want to do a good peel without it uh, being too aggressive. So I'll just put that all over there now. And the other areas we want to be a little mindful of is around the mouth where we don't want it to be too, too, too strong. Really do that eye area there well, and now we want to make sure that dries. So that was our pre-peel solution. Now, whenever you're applying the peel, which is going to be the next product that we're doing, you want to make sure that uh, this is a peel, peeling formula. You want to make sure that you're not fanning or using a regular fan while I'm actually applying it. I like to use cotton. Some people like to use a bigger um, applicator, something like this. Um, they, it absorbs quite a lot of the, um, the peel and you can use these are fine if you prefer, if you feel you have more control with that or you can just use cotton which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put on some gloves here because if the peel gets on my hands it doesn't come off and I don't want to uh, get it on my fingers. So I'm just going to put a glove on the one hand where I'm going to be holding and applying the peel. So here we go. Now again, you want to make sure, here's my cotton, you want to make sure that you're not holding the peel over her face anywhere in case it spills when you put it on your cotton or onto your Q-tip. You want to make sure you're not doing it anywhere close around her eyes because you've got to be very careful with this. You want to make sure that your client has her eyes closed and that you're not getting anywhere, you're being very mindful that nothing's going to drip into that eye area. So here we go with our peel. The peel burns when it goes on. It doesn't um, burn a lot in the very beginning. It takes a moment to start to get down to those layers. But as we start to get down, you're going to notice Kelly's skin is going to start to get quite red, quite pinkish. And, um, and it's going to start burning. And I think I remember Kelly saying years back when we did a peel on her four years ago, I remember her saying that it felt like a hot tamale. Wasabi. <laughs> oh, wasabi, <Okay. laughs> that's it. Right, so there you go, that's exactly right. <laughs> so here we go, so this is coat number one. Now remember, wherever you put the peel, it's not going to be able to be washed off. So uh, again, you, you just need to be mindful of that. It's quite strong, yes. Okay, so we've got our first application on here. What you want to do in between each layer is you want to fan and just dry in between each layer. Now, if you start fanning while I'm putting it on, it dries up the alcohol in it. So you don't want to be constantly fanning the skin, only once we get the layers on the skin.
I'm going to take this down under the chin area. Now, sometimes you want to make sure you're going in a different direction when applying the peel. So, in this one here on the cheek, we're going to be going in the different direction and going up and getting under that hair because that's very important. because we have fine facial hair all over the face and the neck again you want to be going backwards and forwards to make sure you're getting under the fine facial hair it's very very important Now an oily skin, as we know, gets very oily up here close by the eye where they have blackheads. And so you want to make sure that you're really, you're getting everywhere. You're covering the skin very well and being very thorough, but you want to be very mindful of it, making sure it doesn't drip into the eye area. This area here between the brow we're going to go backwards and forwards a little bit because again we want to get under the hair there Okay, we're going to go right, make sure we're getting right by the ear because oil will have oil just here either side of the ear and also inside the ear, but we are not putting peel inside the ear.
I'm standing up for this one. Make sure we really get under that chin area well and along the jaw where a lot of people tend to break out. And we know in face mapping that uh, this jaw area is a large intestine. This area right here, mid-cheek, a small intestine. You can definitely learn more about this as I start my Understanding Skin Tour this May. We will be analyzing skin, talking a lot about the skin and its subconditions and really want people to be able to understand and read skin. So from skin analysis to understanding subconditions, all the different things that you can see on somebody's skin. And then once you know and you understand this, now you can actually go in and treat the skin and get very, very fast results very quickly. And that's what you want. You want to know what it is that you're working with and how to treat it and that way you can get very fast results for your clients.
You can see the skin is starting to change colour in that it is getting um, more pink as we go here. Um, and the skin is starting to blanch a little bit too, which is when you see the skin getting white and it's, um, it's just showing some blanching here on the cheek and over here. What does blanching mean? It means that the skin is becoming saturated and that's what we want. We want the skin to be saturated. So let's check in with Kelly and just ask her what, um, on a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being a very, very burning, a very stingy, uh, what scale would you say? What are you feeling, Kelly? Seven. Seven, okay. So we are, would, is it getting, um, is it at its peak or do you feel it starting to go down, decline yet? It's declining a little bit. It's declining a little bit. Okay, so we were probably at an eight or a nine um, a few applications ago, and now we are uh, slightly declining, which means it will get even less. It will decline uh, more for her as the skin becomes saturated and the skin becomes almost numb, so she won't be feeling it as much. Now, back in the day when I've done peels, there are different ways you can do a peel. And back in the day, I would do a mask on the skin and I'd apply the peel and then I would have them wash their face. Um, they could wash their face just with a little cleanser and just use healing gel for the next week. But what I found over the years sort of working and doing peels is that it's been more successful for me if I have them not wash their face. Uh, for 48 hours. I find that that is something that the longer the peel stays on without an, any um, influence from anything else, that it is a better peel. So I think that the most important thing is just to make sure that you less is better, you know. So um, not washing your face for 48 hours after the application is great. Not working out it with any strenuous yoga or exercising um, for the first three or four days until the skin physically starts to peel. These things are really important. And, uh, and then just using a cleanser with the healing gel, which is an aloe-based gel, is really important um, just for the week uh, until the skin recovers. And then once the skin has fully peeled, uh, you can go back to using your regimen and with your actives, if you're using alpha hydroxy acids or retinol, you might want to wait 10 days before starting with that. So often when the skin peels off completely, it's it doesn't look fabulous for the first few days. You know, it needs to, it, it hasn't been able to breathe. It needs to be exfoliated, which is really important that week once you've almost peeled your skin completely, then it's really great to go in and do an exfoliation, get off any of the little residue bits of peel, and then your skin will start to look great again when you can start back on your regimen. And now you're going to see the pore size is going to be a lot smaller. Things are going to be uh, much more refined, the texture, and um, you know if there's any little brown spots, it lightens up the brown spots as well. It shrinks pore size, it lessens the depth of any little wrinkles. But most importantly, it helps with scarring and pitting these things, uh, especially uh, for an oily skin. I'm a huge fan of peeling an oily skin once the skin is under control. Once the activity of the oil is under control and they're not breaking out as much anymore, then it's a really good idea to then just go in and start doing peels. But you want to get it all under control uh, before you start doing peels. You've got to prepare the skin, you've got to clean the skin really well, get the pores really clean, and make sure that you've got the activity of those sebaceous glands pretty much under control, meaning that they're not uh, breaking out every day, but you're, you know they might still be getting an odd one or two um, once a week or once a month, but you, you don't want to peel very early in the stages of treating an oily acnetic skin. You want to make sure that you, you've got the skin really clean, you've got the oil activity under control and they're not breaking out as much now this is when you can go in and do peels and be very successful with the peel
So if you go back to look at the videos we did with Kelly back in 218, you'll see where her skin was at that point where she was breaking out a lot more. She had a lot of congestion under the cheek area. We needed to clean all of that out before we went ahead and did a peel on her. What would you say, Kelly, we're at at the moment with your um, your numbers, with 10 being the most stingy and burny, where are we at with those numbers? Are we still at 7 or...? 8. 8. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going up. Okay, so we, we hadn't maxed out on our, um, our applications yet. So now we're up to 8, so we are going to keep going until that goes down. Now I just want to show you this. This is what happens. Um, this is peel on my finger that dissolves and has completely put a hole in my glove. So what happens when that, that occurs is you want to put on another glove because um, that's not something that you want. But glove a glove will help protect your fingers. If you can put on a glove just from the peel. All right, we have our glove on. So here we go, we're going to um, continue on. You can see the skin is really blanching there now. It's getting a little whitish in color as the skin blanches. You get that frosty white look on the skin. 
and, uh, and this is what happens when the applications, when the skin becomes saturated, it, uh, it blanches like this, and that's um, a good thing because that's how the skin peels, but it does burn, as Kelly can tell you. <laughs> You don't feel it anymore? Okay, so now that means we've uh, kind of peaked out. The skin has become quite numb and she's not feeling it now. So we're going to probably just put one more application on the skin. I'm going to fan this off here and put one more application on and then... And then we're done with the peel. we go, last application. Um, I'm standing so we can really see uh, under the chin area there, the jawline, just to make sure because a lot of people when they, they've got oiliness and congestion and breakouts, it is going to be under this area here as well. So you want to make sure that you're treating that area equally. Now, Kelly's skin is really good. I mean, it's beautiful. So, you know, what do we expect to get from a peel at this point of her skin? It's just the refinement of pore size to just smooth it out. It's just going to look even more gorgeous. And, you know, if there's any little scarring marks, she's just got a couple here from pimples that um, were had come up, but hardly anything. Uh, but it is just... It's just evening out that skin tone, shrinking pore size, and helping with any little marks that have been on the skin for some time. And that's uh, pretty much it. Now, Kelly, is it? are you still kind of feeling it very much, or are you really not really feeling it at all? Not really. No. Okay, so I think that is a good amount of applications that we've put on the skin. And everyone's different, you know, so you have to, you can't say I'm gonna do 10 coats on this client because we did a lot more than 10 on Kelly and sometimes someone's skin might react really quickly after just six or eight coats. So it is an individual thing. You have to watch the skin, keep an eye on it, make sure they have their eyes closed at all times. And when you're applying it, you want to, the skin is going to tell you when the skin is saturated. And that's how we work with doing a peel. So we fan that off, that's going to dry into the skin. There is nothing more that goes on her skin now. You do not put sunblock on, you don't put anything else on the skin because what happens is you want this skin to get dry and peel. So the only couple of things she'll be using is her cleanser and an aloe base gel and that's it until the skin physically peels off completely in about five to six, seven days, something like that. Then she can introduce her products back into her regimen. But for now, this is all she'll be using. She could, if she wanted to, on a Q-tip, do a little tiny bit of an eye gel up around the eye and put something on the lips because the lips, especially after you do a peel, the lips do feel a little bit funny. Even though we're not putting the peel on the lips, you definitely don't want to be putting the peel applications onto the lip. But I am going to put a little tiny bit of a a lip balm on her lips just just aim for the center of the lip because I don't want it to get to the outer areas because you know how all these things bleed out we want to make sure we're just putting it on the center of the lip that which will just make her lips a little bit more comfortable right now and then her then she's done so again no sunblock even nothing until her skin physically starts to peel once her skin physically starts to peel she can go back to her regimen so because we're not going to ask her to be putting sunblock on or anything on her skin she needs to really be careful of the sun so to make sure that she's not out in the sun too much because as the skin peels off it is going to be a little bit more sensitive to the sun which makes sense so you do want to be really mindful of that 
So I do thank you. I thank you, Kelly, for coming back. It's so great to see you. And, um, and it was great to be here and do another video for you guys. And I'm going to ask Kelly if she'll send us a picture in uh, once she's peeled, her skin is peeled off so we can have a look and see. So thank you so much. It's so great to see you always. Thank you to my audience and we'll see you all again soon. Bye.